Welcome to your 17th web scraping tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be getting the page source of um, New York Times. So um, we're going to be doing a lot of the stuff that we've been doing in the past tutorials but instead of one file we're going to be importing functions that we define ourselves. So in order to get this web page we would do what we've usually been doing. We would just um, we would just import mechanize. So import mechanize. Um, then we would say br equals mechanize dot browser. Then we would say um, HTML text equals br dot open. And then in quotes we would put the URL. And then we would read this. And then we would print HTML text. And then we would run it. It gives us all the HTML. It's not that hard. We've done that in the past tutorials. So what we want to do now is we want to actually import this as a function. So just copy all this text. Control X. Next, I'm going to just make a new file in that same directory. So, Control N, um, paste this in there and save it. And we're in the Word Rank directory in my Python um, folder. So it's Word Rank, and then I'm actually going to call this get um, HTML .py. So I'll save this and I'm going to actually call it as a function. So I'm going to say def get HTML text and then I'm going to indent all of this and I'm actually going to return HTML text. So um, yeah and next I'll go back to my file and I will just say import get HTML and then I will say print get HTML dot get HTML get HTML text and then we'll run this behaves exactly the same. It gets us all of this HTML. So next what we want to do is we want to pass the URL to this function. So instead just copy this entire URL and then put in URL which is just a variable. And this function will take an argument and the argument is URL. So URL will go in the, in the parentheses. So save this go back to our file and then say URL equals this big URL and then we'll actually just pass URL to the function. So now we can see if it still works. It does. It works exactly how we expect. And next what we're going to do is we're going to use beautiful soup to get just the article body. So now if we actually go back to our page here. This is the article body. This is what we want here. So let's just inspect this. And it looks like what we want is item prop equals article body. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another method. And it's actually not going to be in the get HTML file. But what I could do is I could copy this and um, make another function and call it get HTML file. And the only difference is that I will not read the file. So in case I ever just need the HTML file, I can get it. And these both, the good thing about this is that I can import mechanize in a separate file. And if you have different um, like dependencies you need for different um, modules, you don't need to have them on the same file. You can actually break things up. So what we need to do now is 
I'm just going to pass this text to another file, I mean to another, um, another function. So I'll just set this equal to article, or I'll call this web text, and I'm going to make another file. So control N, I'm going to call this, um, what should I call it? I'll call it um, article text, get article text, get, I actually call it article text dot py. So I'll save that and then I'll say from bs4 import beautiful soup, beautiful soup. And next I will say define um, get article text and what this will do is that will take a function called I'll just call it web text and I will say beautiful soup uh, soup equals beautiful soup of web text and um, then I will say for tag in soup dot find all and all is capitalized. What are we looking for? Uh, we are looking for. Let's see. Inspect the element. We are looking for a p tag where item prop is equal to article body, and that's an attribute. So we'll go back to here. We're looking for a p tag, and let's just see what this gives us when we print it. I'll just say a print tag, and then I will go back to here, and I will say import get, uh, I'll just say import article text, and then I will say um, article text dot get get article text of web text and then I will run this see what it gets us so this basically looks like it got all of the p tags and it got all the ones where art item prop equals article body but I think there might be some where item prop is not equal to article body um, it doesn't look like it looks like all the ones that we're getting are item prop equal to article body um, but to be sure you can say this you can say attributes is equal to and inside curly braces say item item prop and then colon and then what is that attribute equal to so let's see what it's equal to article body where b is capitalized so so article body save that and then see if it still works um f5 yep it still works so now we don't want these p tags um, so we want to just return the article itself. We don't want all these tags. So we're going to have to concatenate this whole file into one string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say print tag dot contents. Um, see what that gives us. Okay, so that got just the text. It got rid of the, um, got rid of all the other stuff. So let me see if I can get it out of that array by putting zero. Let's see. Huh. I'm gonna make a new um, variable called article text. 
set it equal to empty string. And then instead of printing it, I'm just going to say article text plus equals to this. And then I'm going to print it out at the end. Print article text. Oh wow, that worked absolutely perfect. I don't know why I was giving it that error before, but this is the article text here. So I'll copy it. Paste. Wow, so that is the article text. And if you actually compare it to the article text on the website, it looks exactly the same. And there's actually a second page, but we would actually um, handle that in our web crawler. That's not something that we would do just in our scraping algorithm. So that's basically how you get a um, an article from New York Times. And uh, I have another idea. So we got article text. And now, now is the, the hard part. So what we're going to do is we're going to say web text equals get article text. Get article text is actually going to call, it's going to take URL. Actually, we're going to leave this. I'm going to make a new function. I'm going to call it um, I'm going to call it get article. Just get article. And it's going to take a URL. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, import get HTML and then I'm going to say um, get article text actually I'm going to return it to myself so I'll say return get article text of um, Actually, I'm just going to say HTML text equals get HTML dot get HTML text of URL. And then I'm going to say return get article text. Return get article text of HTML text. And basically what this function does is it basically combines the two other functions. So now when I go back to my page here, I just have to say get article of URL. both of these return. So what I have to do is actually just print this here in the main program. Try it out. And that basically does the same exact thing. So this is one of the reasons why it's good to separate your functions into separate files. And in the next few tutorials, we'll be going over at classes and templates in Python. And we'll eventually be using a um, a framework for Python, like Django or another one. And yeah, so this is basically using a function in Python because before this code would have taken us 20 or 30 lines, and now it is taking us one line because it's calling functions that we have defined and we're importing into this program.